All right, so the, the question then is, uh, is there uh, some advantage, survival advantage, to uh, sensitization of these uh, uh, sensory neurons, these nociceptors? So this is a question that uh, Terry Walters and Robin Crook uh, set out to answer, along with Roger Hanlon, uh, several years ago. The question that uh, they wanted to ask is whether or not, uh, number one, squids have nociceptors. I just told you that they do, okay? Uh, number two, do squid nociceptors uh, sensitize to injury? So that's what this slide is showing you right here. So what they did was take the uh, fin nerve and the fin from uh, the squid, and uh, they made a crush injury to the fin. And then they asked, does the nociceptor show sensitization when they do that? So uh, they use mechanical stimulation. You see pre-crush. Uh, this fin nerve only really responds at 10 and 100 grams stimulation. But after crush, you see there's an emergence of responding in the, what was previously the non-noxious range, so allodynia, and also a greatly enhanced response in the noxious range, so hyperalgesia, or what you might term hyperalgesia. Okay? What is really interesting about this is that if you use an uh, anesthetic agent for a squid, and that anesthetic agent for squid is magnesium chloride. So magnesium chloride, number one, is not an anesthetic you can use in humans because it doesn't work. And number two, anesthetics in humans don't have the property I'm about to tell you about, unfortunately. What happens if you give an anesthetic, the magnesium chloride, into the fin nerve and squid is that it completely blocks the crush injury induced plasticity, okay? So just anesthetizing the fin is sufficient to completely block the nociceptor sensitization. So what this allows you to do is to take a live squid, either anesthetize the fin or not, okay, and do the crush injury. So that should give you a couple of, of different potential uh, things that you could do experimentally, right? You could have squid that had no injury. You could have squids that had no injury and you anesthetized the fin. You could have squid that had an injury and had no susceptive or no susceptor sensitization because you injured the fin. Or you could have squid that were injured but showed no sensitization because you anesthetized uh, the fin, right? So what that would allow you to do if you expose these squid to a predator is to determine whether or not the sensitization of the nociceptors actually gave some survival advantage to the squid. So these guys actually did that experiment. They made these four groups of squid I just told you about, and then essentially what they did is they took the squid and they put them in a, a big experimental pond where there were some sea bass. And the sea bass is the natural predator for the squid. Okay? So then they recorded what happened, and saw whether the, the squid survived. What they noticed, first of all, is that uh, squid know, know that they're injured, okay? So when uh, the squid are injured and they, they note that there's a, a sea bass coming after them, they uh, start responding uh, sooner, okay? So you can see the injured group, the U is the uninjured, A is an anesthetic, I is injured, again, A is anesthetic. So interestingly, the animals that have been anesthetized don't seem to realize this, right? So they don't mount a response earlier, number one. Uh, they uh, don't seem to uh, show their alert sign uh, earlier either, okay, which happens here. And then finally, when you look at the uh, percent of squid that survived the encounter with the predator, it goes down with the injury, right? But presumably this early response allows these animals to survive. So the nociceptor sensitization allows them to survive even in the face of the predator. Whereas the animals that have the injury and the anesthetic don't respond, and they also don't survive the encounter with the predator. So uh, uh, the most parsimonious interpretation of this data, if you ask me, is that um, nociceptor, nociceptor sensitization does indeed uh, confer a uh, survival advantage uh, for these animals. And that probably gives a, a really good reason that these cells are uh, so plastic and why their plasticity uh, is so persistent after an injury, okay? Because it helps the animal to survive.